So thank you guys. And, and then it's my turn to introduce uh, our council member from District 1, Lisa Kaplan. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, y'all, come on. I can get better out of fifth, five-year-olds. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so this is the level of excitement we need to take into um, the primary. Steve is going to be our next mayor. But guess what? Yes. We all know it's not an I, it's a we. Steve can't get there without the collective we. So some of you have known me for a very long time, Denny. I'm, I met him getting a pedicure. Uh, but I am Lisa Kaplan. I am the new council member for District 1, which is North Natomas. But I am not new to Sacramento. Prior to this, I was a school board member for 20 years. And Steve was actually our council member for South Natomas and I represented all of Natomas. But actually we met Equality California because after law school, we got McGeorge in common. I decided to throw my, uh, the name over there and work in the, in the Capitol for many legislators and met Steve through uh, Equality California because if you haven't figured out with Sacramento Pride, I'm your straight ally. For me, what we need to do is elevate everyone. Anyone who's had experience what it is to be seen as the other. So why am I supporting Steve? Because we need somebody who understands what it is to be the other. Many in Sacramento right now feel that. We need a mayor that has experience. Because I gotta tell you, everybody was said, oh, Kaplan, why are you running for city council? You've been around for 20 years. You need to go away, we need new blood. Can anybody raise their hand if they want a brand new heart surgeon doing their heart surgery? <laughs> because I will tell you, Denny knows it, many of us know it. If you've been around for a long time, it is the precision of heart surgery if we are going to change things in Sacramento. We have got to have that experience and knowledge. So we don't need somebody who spent time at the legislature hoping and dreaming. Because I will tell you, at the local level, we implement. We don't need to bring people in that dream and don't know how to implement. I'm there right now, I could tell you. We need Steve. Our city needs Steve. We need Steve because also, I'm the only mom on city council. <laughs> I know what it's like to pay over two grand a month for childcare. He gets it. We need people who have those lived experiences. Steve is bringing those lived experiences. I also know we need somebody who has the knowledge to get things done and bring people together. Because what do we need in a, in, in a, in a leader and a mayor? And I will tell you this, because we have argued in Sacramento that we need a strong mayor. I will tell you we don't need a strong mayor. We need somebody who knows how to collaborate Agree to disagree, but do it with kindness and pulling people together. It's not about like I, my way, or the highway. It's not about screaming matches. Steve is the only one I trust to bring those of us who all disagree on city council together and do it in a way that when we disagree, it's not about political points. It's about what's best for Sacramento. Because right now, who loves the state of politics we are in? We need Steve as our mayor, because we all know what we do is, is politics, but he's also a, a dad, a father, a businessman, and somebody who has shown and been humbled, because he lost. He knows what it's like to lose, get back up, and do it again for the greater good of Sacramento. That's important. Somebody who doesn't know what it's like to lose and how heartbreaking that is, doesn't do us a service here in Sacramento. So we need his experience. We need his humbleness. 
we need his get it done attitude because you know, if I could have said my campaign slogan was elect Lisa GSD, <laughs> if we could politically get that off, but Steve is the GSD because Sacramento no longer can wait that it's going to take this long. We need to do it. So please help me. This isn't just, because I know I don't need to convince you, but what I need to tell you is the things I'm telling you, you need to tell the voters. We need you to put on your tennis shoes. Have you all signed up to volunteer? Yes. <laughs> I know some of you are not telling the truth. And by the way, bring a friend. Because I will tell you, campaigning is lonely. Bring a friend along. Who's donated? Who's donated? Dude, you can donate a coffee. Who's got five bucks? Come on. We need to ask our friends. It's the money we need to get the hard work done. I have run five campaigns myself and always been the number one vote getter. And I will tell you, it's boots on the ground. So we got to commit. I don't care about the weather. I grew up in Oregon. Come on, put a rain jacket on, and guess what? You get more votes when you're out in the rain. So let's put in the hard work. As long as they have good umbrella. Good umbrella? <laughs> oh no, umbrellas are a waste of time. Have a good hat on. Because you gotta, you gotta carry stuff, and now we got PDI, so it's all on your phone. Remember, I used to be paper a long time ago. Um, so we need Steve. We need you. We need to get things done in Sacramento, and we need to elect a mayor who can pull people together. And those are all the reasons that Steve is the only one who can do that. So let's, let me introduce my friend, compatriot, who's had my back for a really long time. Even when we disagree, we still like each other. <laughs> but Sacramento's next mayor, Steve Hansen. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. I don't know if you're ready. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Right. We're going to do this. We're going to win this race, and ballots come in 23 days. There is no longer an election day. We have an election month, which makes it all the more fun for everyone. So I can't tell you how much it means to me to have you here this morning. We are not people who like to go out when it's wet. <laughs> We're not people who like to go out when it's cold. So that you're here today, and some people traveled farther than others. Some people here, you know, I'm just honored to have because you've been involved in the life of the city or me for decades. Some people like my dear friend Michael Picker actually served as chief of staff to a mayor and knows what it takes. But the reason I had those three speak, and I'll get into it, but I wanna thank Denny, Maya, and Lisa. They've known me. Denny, when I was unemployed after the governor got recalled and we had a huge state budget deficit, couldn't get a job. Denny gave me a job in his office. And it got me by, and that bridge got me into my role at Equality California, because I had to wait till they made their decision. And it allowed me to pay my rent when I didn't have any money. Denny was there, and he did that for a lot of people. Maya was there through a lot of thick and thin. When we were trying to ch save the city, we, we care about housing. When I ran in 2011, 2012, having been a poor kid, I realized this week, and it's, it's funny, it took me a long time to realize this, that the first restaurant I probably ate at was a soup kitchen with my mom. That soup kitchen, the Dorothy Day Center, after my mom died earlier this year, I realized, and I should have realized it a long time ago, but sometimes until you're in a moment where everything kind of fits, you don't know. But it's on land that my great-grandfather had donated to Catholic Charities. Right? I know where I came from. And to save this city, to turn the city around, to make it worthy, we're not a second-class city in California, but we're treated that way by a lot of people. We're a fucking awesome city. And yes, I did swear. And Lisa can get shit done. And we're gonna get a lot of stuff done because too often the capital thinks it can dictate to us who we're gonna be, what's important. 
Fresno got $250 million for housing in a budget just two years ago, and we got almost nothing. How is that? We are taken advantage of by people that say they care about us because we're so proud to be the capital. But we are so much more than the capital. <sighs> Homelessness, the crisis on our streets, is completely unacceptable. I was homeless as a kid on and off. You heard about eating at a soup kitchen. We moved around a lot, lived in a domestic violence shelter. I never knew what I could be. When I finally went to live with my dad when I was 10, I had so much trauma that my school had counselors come and meet with me. We have to understand where we come from as a people, as a place, in order to get to where we should be. And as I look back at that little kid who didn't know then that he was gay, enlisted in the military, and then Don't Ask, Don't Tell came to be not long after, and I realized that I was on a collision course with myself, I ended up coming here for a graduate fellowship 22 years ago almost, not knowing that this was gonna be my forever home. Now with two kids who we've been lucky to to adopt and bring into our lives. They're out on a play date today, so that was more important to them. <laughs> <laughs> They're soon to be four and six. I look at them and I see myself. I look at them and I see the other kids in our neighborhoods. I look at them and see the people in front of me and think, if somebody doesn't care enough to do the right thing when it's not benefiting that person, which is too often in politics the case, people are afraid to make strong decisions, hard decisions, because they don't want to get blamed. They don't want to look down the road and see how it benefits people because it's easier to hide and please people screaming and yelling at you now and shortchange people down the road. We've had too much of that. Our city, not only we have to build lots of housing, I have a plan for that. I have a plan for homelessness, but restoring safety and cleanliness in our city so our small businesses feel secure, so our families feel secure. I had planned to run again. And I know that's a weird thing because I used to joke I'm a recovering Catholic, recovering lawyer, recovering politician. <laughs> well, I'm relapsing on the last one. <laughs> last fall, homeless folks burned down a duplex and a fourplex across the street from us. The home I'd lived in for 16 years, where I was raising my family. Our daycare three blocks away, surrounded by camps and feces, people jumping in when the kids were there, and the city did nothing. The city didn't care. You would think that everything was sunshine and roses. We not only have problems, we have opportunities, and we have to be realistic about how we're gonna address those. I love this city. When we first ran, on the back of every shirt, it said, every day is our chance to make this city a little better. Now on the back of our shirts, it says, our city, our future. And it says that because nobody can sit on the sidelines. There is no room for atheism in this. We have to believe that we are worthy, that if you love this place, you fight for it, and that we have a better future if we all come together, despite political differences, despite ideologies, despite whether or not someone looks like you. We are a community that loves one another, is gonna fight for one another, and that's the future I'm bringing to Sacramento. Economically vibrant, safe, clean, and addressing those problems while we chase our opportunities, and we have so many opportunities. So, people are gonna start voting. We, when I launched this campaign, you wouldn't believe, a lot of you probably weren't sure. We have exceeded every expectation that people had for us. Not only were some of those low expectations, that's a little bit of soft bigotry, right? <laughs> but I was out of office. I was never supposed to win in 2012, but because of people like you, we won. Might have been by the skin of our teeth, but we walked, we talked, we built the future. Some of the people in this room, Jameson Parker, were part of making that happen, and then we delivered in City Hall on arts, on culture, on housing, on homelessness, and so much. We built more affordable housing during my time on City Council in my district than anyone else. We built bike lanes, we built the Sophia, the Clara, the Mosa. We filled empty lots, we, we took care of blighted properties, we helped rebuild parks, we did all that stuff. And that's what we're gonna do more for the entire city. And there are parts of the city that are totally left behind. Look at District 2. And Daniel Savala was here who um, does a lot of work on Del Paso Boulevard. Places like that have to be seen 
and I'm going to, with your help, see them. But we need to tell everyone, do not be shy. This is not the time to wait. Post who you're supporting. Volunteer. Do phone banks. Allison, where are you? Right here. Allison is our uh, field coordinator. And if you can help, we're going to do phone banks here. We're going to walk on weekends. Walk with me. If you're afraid to walk, come out with me. I would love to have you walk with me. Like literally with me, not just figuratively <laughs> with me. We, we exceeded our expectations on fundraising. For not being in office, raised over, we together, thanks to you and many people in this room, raised over $530,000 by the end of the year. That was in six months. That was in six months. Some people are transferring hundreds of thousands of dollars from state campaign accounts because they're not raising it from people in this community. We're raising it from people in this community. So give, we have to raise a little bit more, about another 100,000, I know it sounds scary, but we're gonna do it. $100 matters. We have events next week, the week after, the week after, the week after. Come have fun, but you don't have to come to an event to give. But in the end, by being here today, you represent the future of the city. So I am so, as somebody who never knew what I could be, I was talking to Anthony, Anthony, right? Yeah. He's a junior in high school. When I was a junior in high school, I was afraid. My parents didn't go to college, they had divorced. You know, my mom, bless her heart, was a, a nurse's aide working in senior homes, backbreaking work, destroyed her body. She, she passed in April, like I said, 69. My dad died at 53, paper recycling plant worker. Probably had autism, like my brother who's lived in a group home since he was 12 and then graduated from that to live with the woman who ran it. I didn't know what I could be, but I know that Sacramento is a place where everybody can be something. Everybody can be more than they know they can be. And whether you're a kid in Meadowview, a kid in Del Paso Heights, you're off of Franklin Boulevard, or you're just trying to find your way through life in, in Northgate or somewhere else, we are a city that gives people chances. And so if you are pledged to help me, I have these tokens of appreciation. And on it, these are from my city council days. We didn't spend money on this. <laughs> but when people used to do things of extraordinary value for the city, I would give them one. So if you are pledged to help me, it has three mottos on it. It has our national motto, e pluribus unum, from many come one. We are many people who form one city. To the city motto, indomitable city. We're gonna fucking fight for what is ours, and we are gonna make this city glow and shine and sing like it deserves to. And that's the whole story of floods, fires, pestilence, plague, everything that tried to keep our city back. Not anymore. And the third one is a Jesuit motto. You know, the Jesuits are all about um, for the, the greater good. Aje quod ages, and it means do well and do good. Because we are not perfect. We have to know that we are not perfect. But the effort, the effort matters. Striving matters. And with all of your help, we are going to get there. I will be sworn in as mayor in December of this year, and we are going to set the city on a new path. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for fighting for Sacramento. Now let's go rock it.